Hello, Acron fans! Welcome back! We are at day four of 2012 Christmas Tournament casts, and we are ending off with Rockmox versus Ferreter. This is going to be on hills, of course. Hills of all places. Rockmox very quickly going for C CISO, Ferreter very quickly going for Grekim, and both players set themselves up. This is, of course, one of the more proxy oriented maps, and I realized I made a very small mistake in my last cast. Hills, in fact, has four entrances into the main base. Not three, though this very, very, very backdoor entrance has used been used, I think, exactly once. Maybe. I haven't only seen, I think, one game, and I don't even remember what that game was. So, usually it's these two entrances, sometimes this backdoor one from the expansion over here, but this is another entrance from the Cliff Ridge area behind the bar here. Is a thing that can be done, though, with Rock Mox, he's probably going to have his infantry over in this corner here, or maybe over in this corner here, and then just do an edge attack with them. I doubt he's going to have them over here, but he might just. We might just see that happen now. Anyway, he is going for very quick 3 RP and 1 importer, probably going to factory very soon. This is common for hills, and Ferreter, on the other hand, will probably be going for... Well, I was going to say he's going to go for a quicker QP RP and then quick Octopod, but it looks like he's going straight for a quick LC. Probably will get... Either move his RP or maybe build another one, but on a map like Hills, I'd recommend moving the RP to get his early defensive Octopod. And other than that, I, I mean, really, Rockmox has played quite a few games, and almost all of them on Hills, that his strategy is... Well, he's going to have to change it up, honestly, because this is game one of two, of two maybe three. And, well, it's going to say game one of three, because... Best of three right now, so even if Rockmox wins this one, he is going to have to deal with, well, Ferreter knowing what his strategy is. And Ferreter probably already knows what his strategy is, and a, okay, a factory outside the main base, I wouldn't call this a proxy, seeing as it's only slightly closer, but it is still out of the way, so Ferreter will not know where that is, but once he scouts at the main base, is, well, okay, if he scouts at the main base, Grekin having poor scouts on a map like Hills where scouting is going to be a lot riskier. He may not actually look for it, but if he sees there's no factor in the main base, he should suspect something. Ferreter, having suspected stuff successfully in his last game, will probably find it, but it's not a proxy exactly. It's just out of the way. So, Rockmox is scouting infantry doing some damage. Ferreter... Oh, Ferreter did have a defensive Octopod, or Octo, and his Octo is coming into the main base. Ferreter has... Become aware of what's going on, also smashing up an importer. Rockmox having no defense against that, so at least Ferreter will be able to slow that down. The factory will still be able to build mechs, though, even without having any imp any reserves. That being said, I don't see that Octo. Looks like Ferreter went and echoed that out, which is unfortunate because the damage it dealt would have been crucial. But we'll see. Rockmox might still be found out for his factory. That factory out in the corner, though... That's going to help a lot. Rockmox is going to have a very hard time being taken down. And... Yeah, we see that there is some echoing out of everything... Or is everything going on here? We are looking at Rockmox's point of view. and No, sorry, Ferret's point of view. And yeah, this Octo is getting echoed out. I, either Rockmox killed it or he just got out of the way. But no, both players have echoed their scouting out completely. And Ferreter... I mean, he echoed that out to the point that was building the RP over here. But he does have an early Octopod that will be at least useful for defense, but once again, Rockmox has echoed out his attack as well. Both players having no real attacks coming in. A little bit curious where Rockmox has actually set up his infantry. Ah, no, I shouldn't be curious. He is in fact setting it up back over this ridge that I mentioned earlier that I wasn't sure if he'd set it up at. Though it looks like the Special Ops is trying to go onto the cliff itself, but yes, he is setting up himself up on this ridge. So it'll, the fourth entrance is being used for the second time ever, I think. Maybe first time ever. But yeah, Rockmox gave himself up for an edge attack, which Ferreter should be expecting. He does have an Octopod ready in case this happens, so he will at least be able to stop it without too much damage. At the same time, Rockmox is sending an ATHC around the north side, probably going down from there, and it'll be a matter of which one hits. At this point, only one Octopod being able to defend against all of this coming in from all sides. It'll be rather tricky to set this up. So Ferreter is going to be... Well, Ferreter's probably going to be fine. 
That Octopod is still going to be enough to get rid of the ATHC, and the infantry won't last long either, but it's going to be possibly ATHC distracting the Octopod long enough for the infantry to deal real damage to the RPs near the unplayable past. And Rockmox, other than those ATHCs, has not built much out of this factory. And he doesn't appear to be looking too healthy in economy either. He has four LCRPs. Okay, he is actually looking fairly healthy in economy compared to Ferreter. But there's something about the way he's playing it out. It does not seem like he's planning to go for tech. It seems like he's planning to go pretty heavily for this early attack. And if he's lucky having distracted the Octopod, going in for the edge attack, and trying to deal a ton of damage there, just crippling blows. But, Ferreter appears to be prepared for this. He does have his bubble wrap going up, so everything to the north will be pretty much protected. He has his patrol route going around, so that will stop any attacks that come in. So, Rockmox, I'd say in about the next minute or so of real time, he's going to be sending these infantry in for an attack at the Unplayable Past Edge, and he is not otherwise building much else. He's getting his RPs, getting yet another ATHC, and not... Here we go. There's the edge attack I was waiting for. Infantry are coming in, but not dealing too much damage. The Octopod coming around to get them, so Rockmox's main strategy being very handily countered by Ferreter's early preparation. Like I mentioned, that was probably what was going to happen, and without the ATHCs distracting the Octopod, guaranteed. So Rockmox losing his main crippling blow Still has <laughs> Ferreter thanking Kron Aberrant for, I guess, pointing out what was going on, or or possibly just losing to Rockmox in the first place. As I believe that is Kron Aberrant that lost to this earlier on in the tournament. No, never mind, what am I saying? Kron Aberrant didn't lose to this, he hasn't lost at all this tournament, but he did... I'm sure he encountered it, and other people have encountered it as well, if not in the tournament, then outside the tournament. I'm sure Kron Aberrant is currently in the chat, he might be watching the stream. So, if he is watching the stream, it'd be nice if he were to confirm what he told Ferreter so that I know what it was. Oh, I see. Ferreter mentioning he took his that patrol route idea from Kron Aberrant. And it's a good idea. Really, more players should do this. I've been doing this myself, but it's something that came up a bit early on. Numbers was the first player I saw to use it quite a bit. But that was a mid-game thing with Vekir. Seeing it very early on with the Octopods is really clever to do. It's something that should be done in general, just for defense, just having everything there, having a wider area covered, rather than relying on defense turrets, which this game has very weak implementations of. And nice, well, poorly timed by Rockmox, the ATCs are being torn apart by Octopods, just because that Octopod happened to be there at that time. No real harassment going on there, but even with that, the reefs are there for healing. Ferreter has got himself closed up quite tightly. Well, Rockmox now needs to change up a strategy a bit. I don't see him changing up a strategy, but he needs to. He needs to possibly get... Well, he needs to get more QP, needs to get machinery or get macrofabs, and then build up from there. Ferreter is getting... He's getting himself advanced structures. He will be able to get air units very soon, and he has the QP to do it. He can... He has the resources to support air units right now. And one more QPRP, he's going to be in great shape as far as that's concerned. So... Right now, Rockmox is on the back foot and needs to start building himself up, needs to know about getting the counter up. ATHCs are actually a pretty good unit in general, but Firepods, a couple of them will be able to tear the ATHCs to shreds despite their detection and despite them being able to hit air decently well. Now, I don't see Rockmox really changing the strategy, getting more RPs, which is good, but not really building up from there yet, just trying to go for a mass ATHC attack and hoping that that will work. And if he times it right, it should. And not only Mass HHC, he's also saying at one of the HHCs around to scout out a bit. Doesn't appear to be doing more than scouting out. Might be trying to go for a flank, which against this patrolling Octopod would be good. Having a nice flank assault would allow it to either distract the Octopod and deal damage to the rest of the base in the meantime, or kill off the Octopod with a larger group while another HHC is still dealing damage in the background. But Ferreter getting himself up, he was getting up a, a Seppi Pod fairly quickly. No, no Lancers, no tanks, no machinery at all actually, no macrofabs for frigates. Frigates don't require machinery by the way, so it's not going to be something that would be hard to get, it's just a matter of getting the QP to get it, and Rockmox focused heavily on spitting out ATHCs, and here comes, yes it is a flank in fact, he is going straight to the north, and will be the larger group engaged in the Octopod, but the Octopod does see them coming before it comes up. 
and Ferder will be actually also dealing with this ATT to the south with an Octo. The Octo will die in the meantime, but it will at least buy a lot of time for it to get through. The ATT barely alive, one Octo hit away, and the Octopod as well. Oh, the Octopod actually going down, or nearly going down, near enough to the reefs now to heal up. Ferder managed to pull that away, but it's still going down. Cepipod will defend, however. One ATC going down in the process, and no, even there, the Cepipod is actually taking a lot of damage. But more Octos coming in to help defend against this. Ferder's ATC is going down. Well, they will be going down fairly quickly, but still dealing it some damage. The Reefs getting distracted by having a lot of targets to heal means that it's going to be harder for this active defense to happen. Ferder, however, moving some of the RPs away, and good thing too, that distracting the ATC is enough that the Sepipod can get in and start dealing some damage. But even then, the Sepipod is going down. Ferder needs to keep re-microing it to get out of the way. And it looks like from Rockbox's point of view, about 20 seconds down, there isn't really anything changing with this. So the Octo is dealing enough damage. The RP has flown away. The Sepipod and the Octo are taking care of the ATCs, or, well, would be. The Octo is helping, but really they're just buying time, keeping the Reefs able to heal everything. And the flanking ATC also not going down. Not sure why the Sepipod hasn't gone down there to deal with it. So Ferder being attacked from all sides, but has enough healing to not have to worry. And a Macrofab is up for Rockmox. Rockmox will be able to get himself Martanks, will be able to get himself Frigates. No machinery, mo machinery yet. Machinery is the next thing to get. He will need to get that. And if he does, he'll be in great shape. As it stands, he has successfully contained Ferder. And for what Ferder is doing, containment like this is the best strategy. So Rockmox now getting himself back on the front foot by keeping Ferder unable to really expand well. Because Ferder clearly doesn't have the resources to deal with his harassment without being near his main base and his reefs. So Rockmox also, like I said, he is expanding. He's getting resources around the map, at least in the northwest corner. He has his Macrofab and he has Martanks coming up. This is going to be very difficult for Ferder to deal with. Ferder, however, has not even built a Pharopod yet. And he is soon to have the resources to do so. If he does so, that'll be a lot harder to deal with. The Martanks have no air defense, and the ATHCs, even though they can fight against air, it's still not going to be enough. Against a couple of Firebots, especially with Octopod support. And the Octopod's going for an early attack. As Rockmox is preparing, he's going to have to actually deal with this. No, we don't see it from his point of view, though. But this is a bit of an early attack, intercepting the ATHCs before they get close enough with Octos for support. Getting rid of one of the ATCs before the rest of the Martanks ATCs and Mech come over. So, nice timing by Ferder, while at the same time sending his Semipod around to harass, getting rid of one of the importers. A completely undefended main base, by the way. However, this is probably Rockmox's weakest asset. He doesn't need it as much as anything else. However, once again, losing his main army, though his last time he lost main army, it did at least keep Ferder in his base for a while, bought him some time. These Martanks are going to be the real moment of truth though if they oh this martank out of position it won't be able to attack quite well enough the octopod martank we'll see which one comes out on top but i think it's going to be the martank actually just barely yes just barely the martank comes out on top one more hit would have done it in but not quite enough the sepipod getting rid of the importer so rock mox fewer reserves but still a lot of resources while ferreter stockpiling what he can he does not have any more rps than he i mean he's quite a ways behind in terms of rps compared to rock mox but he is retreating his Octopods to his main base. That intercept attack didn't do a huge amount. Got rid of one of the ATHCs, but the rest of the Martanks are coming in. They're going to be very scary. So Octopods, Octos and Octopods now coming in to deal with everything. This is not a bad idea. Whoever is targeted, the other one's going to be distracted. And from there, it will be harder for the Martanks to deal with all of these guys at once. But even with that, Ferreter is still having a lot of problems dealing with defense here. Rockmox is continuing to build up more Martanks. Getting a frigate now. And that frigate will be able to counter any farpods that come up. So I don't know why Ferder has not built up any farpods or anything like that in the meantime, but still these Octos are doing what they can. Along with the Octopod, dealing some damage, but it's not enough. The Martanks are still getting through and still dealing a lot of damage. For the cost as well, when you consider that, it's going to be very difficult to work with. So Rockmox is very strongly on top right now. Ferder trying to go for some more surgical strikes, but... Not really able to do so. So appears to be going back for defense with the Sepipod to get rid of those Martanks. And finally a Pharopod being built. 
a little bit late because of the frigate, but Sepipod will be able to defend that Farpod from that frigate as long as he keeps them in a good position, but right now he is more focused on patrolling around, double checking, make sure that Rockmox has not expanded everywhere on the map. And he will find that Rockmox has only expanded towards the northwest corner, which is still quite a lot of resources. And once again, Ferreter, he doesn't have a lot of Chrono Energy, but he does have a lot of resources, and he needs to be building up with those resources, getting more Octos to help with these Mar Tanks, and the Frigates and Mar Tanks coming in! Ferreter is not in position to deal with this at all! He has a bunch of units in his main base over, and they should be fine, but the Farpod and Sepipod are completely out of the way. Farpod getting rid of the Armory, which hasn't researched anything, though it's not looking like Rockmox really cares. Rockmox doesn't appear to have much interest in research right now. He appears to be quite happy with going with non-machinery units on this attack. And even with that, looks like the is actually able to get rid of one of the Mar tanks coming in, so it's able to disrupt the supply lines a bit. At least that means there's no reinforcements coming in that Rockmox can actually get through without that frigate. Where is that frigate anyway? There it is. So the frigate has gone around and it is out of position for defending against this. If the frigate is built, then it will be able to fend off that Sepipod, but at this point the Sepipod is able to get rid of these reinforcements coming in. Rockmox. Rockmox only has the army he has up front here for dealing with this, and the Octopus and Octopods are taking care of it. Frigate trying to harass from the from the south, but not doing too much. It is going to be able to get rid of these RPs fairly easily, but at the same time, Ferret are dealing a ton of damage, harassing around, getting rid of these importers, getting rid of the RPs, getting rid of the Marines, building all of them. And like I said before, getting rid of the reinforcements, or at least slowing them down. One mech, however, coming up, getting rid of that. That Sepi will have to run away, scaring it off. But still, that is a lot of damage to Rockmox's back end, and Ferreter, despite not having a lot of defense in his main base yet, he is developing it. Getting a Sepi Pod to fend off the frigate, and that will be gone now. So the frigate has gone down. Martanks are getting finished off, and the main base. Well, the Sepi Pod had ran away, by the way, that was one that killed the frigate. But the main base. Well, the base that Rockmox has been primarily worried about getting destroyed in a hurry. Rockmox is gonna have a hard time getting out of this. Once again, put himself on the back foot. A little bit odd. I think he really should have teched up a bit. Gotten. Well, Martangs aren't bad, but gotten ground units to get Twin Mars. That would have helped a bit. And maybe just more, really. More units in general. Another Macrofab, maybe, with from there building up more frigates at a time. Because you really can't deal with Ferreter's unit production number. Like, the amount of unit production... Unit production throughput. You cannot deal with that. Ferreter simply has more units being built at a time than Rockmox ever could with the amount of production structures Rockmox has. Rockmox trying to get some mechs up to deal with this, but not nearly enough. Martanks coming through, ignoring the Sepibods as they go. And getting destroyed by Octos. Those Octos really are doing a lot of damage to them. Like I said, Twin Mars would be a better strategy, but Rockmox just now getting machinery, does not have ground units, and getting a heavy cruiser, but right now I think a heavy cruiser is too little too late. It's great for support, but against these Sepipods, it's going to go down in a hurry. This can be a waste of money, I'm afraid. Now, healing units would have been very handy. They would have been able to counter those reefs by simply out-healing them. But it looks like that's not going to be the case either, and Ferreter... No real assaults happening in his main base. Heavy Cruiser will be coming up shortly, and here it is! The Heavy Cruiser trying to do what it can against these Sepipods. Once it sees them, at least. And the Sepipods are distracted, actually. This this could be something. The, Sep the Sepipods do not have... Well, any knowledge of the Heavy Cruiser, but... No, now they do, and Rockmox... Rockmox has lost Game 1 from the looks of it. He has surrendered. That is Game 1. Game 1 or 2, or 3, depending on whether or not Ferreter wins the next game, which we will get to shortly, but I will not be leaving this time. Just be switching over to that, so... That was... Another Hills game. Really, I'm not sure what more I can say about that. It was, it was a Hills game. Hills has a very specific kind of game that it produces. And that was one of them. And, of course, as it would happen, Hills is again for Game 2 between Rockmox and Ferreter. I am a bit surprised that Rockmox did not put in a small rule that you can't pick the same map in the same series. I suppose I should have mentioned that when I was giving feedback. I guess I assumed it would just be the case. So yes, we're playing on Hills for Game 2 and Game 1, so it's 
I hope you like hills, because it's coming up here. So, Rockmox is probably the one that was picking hills both times. I don't know if J Raccoon likes it as much, but. I mean. Sorry, not J Raccoon. Ferreter. J Raccoon doesn't matter. J Raccoon lost last game. He was. I searched, that's what I'm wondering, because I'm not sure if it was Ferreter's choice or J Raccoon's choice to play Act Natural twice. So, I'm curious if Ferreter or Rockmox is the one who's been picking this. And I think it was Rockmox both times, because I'm pretty sure Loser picks after the random pick. But. Yeah. Again, hills. So both players setting up their economy as usual, and setting up Ferreter, setting up all the stuff. He's setting up his RPs, and Rockmox is setting up his RPs and Importer. I don't know if he's going to go for that same proxy strategy again. Jericho is probably going to look for it. He appears to be having his infantry going the same way as he always has, so an Octopod for Ferreter will be coming up, patrolling, and all that. I don't see anything really different about this game compared to the last one, but Rockmox, he's got to change something up because that last game did not work for him. He didn't actually, he wouldn't, didn't win. I mean, you can see Ferreter has one win. So Rockmox, his proxy factory strategy, unless it's really a proxy and not just an out of the way, isn't going to be that useful. The nice thing about having it here was that he had some map control along this, but really his weak point was his main base. He didn't have anything in his main base to defend. So even though he had some production structures over here, which he needed more of, he didn't have really anything across the map. So he had this top left corner, that was about it. And it was not enough. But it appears he has a marine going towards the southwest and possibly expanding there. So at least that's different. He's focusing on the south side of the map instead of the north side of the map. While Ferreter is... He's getting his early QP. He's getting the one cycle of QP for Octopod. Probably not likely to be staying on that. And Rogmox putting his infantry in position. While Ferreter does see what's going on, Rogmox still sticking with what he has. Now if Ferreter does not echo out this scout. If he just goes with this, keeps the Octo there, and that's it, that will probably make Ferreter win faster. Ferreter really should just keep that there. He shouldn't move it. While this Special Ops and Marine are coming in, dealing some damage, Ferreter needs to build up some Octos, but he's not focused at this point in time anyway. Or an Octopod, actually. It'd be even better. So we're getting his Octopod up, we'll be putting on patrol, and I don't see Rockmox's forces around here. It looks like they might have stayed in his main base. We might be moving him back. No, he is not. He is simply continuing along with them into Ferreter's base. So yeah, Ferreter's Octo, if it's coming in, will be dealing a lot of damage, but no it is not. He is not in fact attacking with it. He went back, equited it in to... Actually, I don't know where he equited it to. Really, I don't know why he's not dedicating himself to this attack. I, I feel like I'm missing something. But it would appear that the auto came up early enough that it could attack and deal some damage. And really deal some damage. But he's not really using it for that purpose. So right now, Rockmox retreating away, avoiding that attack, and not even going into position for an uppercut. Or not an uppercut, an edge attack. He's just moving out of the way completely. And it's probably a good idea. He had wasted the inventory last time, and he's probably going to be facing the same thing. Ferreter's going to be patrolling around his main base again and everything. So I know this isn't where the Octo was, but he just seems to have equited it out. I don't... I don't know. Because this importer, if it were to go down, Rockmox would be dead in the water. At least somewhat. He's focusing on his economy right now, but it'd be easier to harass him and easier to deal with him. So Rockmox focusing heavily on economy, neither player going for all-ins, which is kind of interesting. I almost expect Ferreter would go for an all-in. He has won one game. If he wins this game, he wins. If he loses this game, he gets another shot. Rockmox, I can see not going for an all-in just because he's he has one game left. Otherwise, he's out of the tournament completely. This is the loser's bracket, by the way. So whoever wins will be going to face Cronaver, and whoever loses will be out of the tournament completely. And Ferreter... At a much lower risk at this point, but he's he's continuing along with the same strategy. He is not trying to go for an early win. He is simply trying to get himself in a stable position. While Rockmox putting his factory once again out of the way, but at the south side, so it's going to be harder for it to be spotted. However, at the same time, it's also going to be harder for it to actually block off anything or produce units right where the attack is, which actually could be a good thing. Would mean that the units are not being killed as soon as they come out of the factory, unless it's attacked directly. But at the same time, this importer going down is just going to be death. So 
Rockmox needs to build another importer and possibly build. Well, possibly build a Macrofab or another factory to surround the map within the next five minutes. While Ferreter getting his bubble wrap set up, another set before another reef, and another. Well, two more reefs. He doesn't have the QPRPs that we'd need for advanced structures, so he still needs to build more of those, but he doesn't have the money for that either. And. Rockmox, let's see, he is building up at the southeast corner of the map. So he is definitely focused heavily on the south side of the map, getting another importer, getting that RP, getting an HHC, this factory, and that's about it. No further HHCs, I think he might have been not paying attention. While Ferreter, he has his main base all bubble wrapped up nicely, and no QPRPs yet. Getting another RP, but nothing on QP, so he can't easily tech up, or tech up at all for that matter. And the Octo looks like it's probably for an RP, so really setting up his main base. Ferreter also going around, double checking to see what Rockmox is up to for expansions, because like I said, neither player is really pressuring the other, which is a little surprising. And here's another factory, so Rockmox is in fact taking my advice from the future, and building another factory. Because this is a replay, by the way, so of course, when this is played, I wasn't watching, because I didn't want to spoil it for myself. And Ferreter not seeing what Rockmox has going on in the center of the map, not really seeing what Rockmox has going on at all, so Ferreter is still a little bit in the dark. Oh no, never mind, the HTC didn't manage to kill the Octo ultimately, so... Or at least nearer to the future, so... This Octo will be able to scout around a bit. Might not see that the Southeast has been taken though, that will probably be an unpleasant surprise later on when Ferreter tries to expand there. Not sure if he even expects that to be taken, honestly. That's... Not something that happens often. But that's, that's your proxy this game is this factory right here, and this importer as well. Just in case the main base gets heavily attacked, there is a way to rebuild. But more HTCs coming in from the third and flanking once again. So the Octopod will be able to take out either of these easily, and the infantry, like I said before, are not set up to do an edge attack, have not been this entire game. The Marines instead, well, the Special Ops Marine pair over in the southeast corner, the Marine, the Lone Marine on the northwest corner just waiting for its chance to expand a bit. And these ATCs not going for any attack, so Ferreter prepared for the inevitable Rockmox attacking him. Not sure if he's prepared for the less predictable of the Southeast proxy, and that's not being used. Rockmox actually isn't building anything from it yet. I take that back. He is now building something from it. He is doubling up his, his ATCs and starting to queue him up as well, which is not a great idea, but he is definitely using his two production structures. Doubling his rate of production, getting mass ATHCs, and this is going to be interesting. Ferreter now has two QPRPs, he has advanced structures, jumping back about 20 seconds, but he has what he needs to build up Arianus reliably. So, no Farapod, not enough for Farapods, but enough for Sepipods. If he moved one of the RPs over to QP, he had enough Farapods very quickly. And the ATHCs are getting ready. Rockmox probably going to build about well, 10 or so, I'd say, for the amount he's getting. Really going heavily for this attack. But no tech, nothing other than ATHCs, no Lancers or... Mechs, maybe, but Lancers would be the big one. This is... This is going to be a bit hard for Ferreter to deal with. And Ferreter getting distracted by the ATC to the north, while ATCs to the south aren't actually doing anything yet. But the ATC to the north will be dealing no damage, really. The Octo is taking a bit of damage, but it'll heal up once it goes by the reefs. However, there is... Oh, where did Rockmox attack? Rockmox is actually attacking from the south at the same time. So this distraction, if he keeps going with the distraction, it will be very useful. But he's not! The Octopod will be able to go around and spot the distraction before it comes up. Rockmox not flanking well. Actually, it looks like Rockmox lost the initiative on that one. He is going to have to deal with the Octopod along the edge, but that is still going to be... Well, that's Octopod is still going to go down very quickly. The Reef's not enough to heal it up, and it's going to go down. However, one of the HTCs going down in the process, getting rid of the Octopod, and Octopod... Rockmox dealing a ton of damage to Ferreter's main base. Ferreter is going back down to the 725 mark. Has a Sepi and a Faro going along to the northwest. So both players taking the north-south, or splitting along north-south rather than east-west. And a Spire being built up quickly. I don't know if he's going to go for Faropods quickly, or Sepipods quickly. He is in fact going for Octos quickly, or a couple more Octos. Trying to defend against the ATHCs, the ATHCs will be coming very shortly, but he still has a bit of time to defend against this. Another Octopod coming up, that will be helpful. 
If he has yet one more Octopod, that should do it. Though the Inspire is a bit of a waste, but not that big of a deal. Not that expensive compared to losing your entire base. Ferret is still in a tight spot, but he might be able to defend himself well enough. His Octopod is entirely near all of his reefs, so healing up completely. Octos will also be able to distract, but it's kind of tricky to tell right now. So Rockmox is, from what we can tell, dealing a lot of damage still. No edge attacks, however. Rockmox did not set up anything for that, and the Octopods getting healed, being able to get rid of the ATHCs well enough while the Octos distract them, and this should work. I think Ferreter will be able to defend against this, getting rid of half the ATHCs within a short period of time. And at the same time, we see Rockmox finding this duo over in the northwest side of the map, but the ATHC is going down with a lot of money down the drain for Rockmox just against those Octos. And one of the Octopods is going down, however, Ferreter is going to try to deal with this, going back a bit. And I don't know if he's going to be able to. This Octopod, a bit out of position, not being healed by one of the Reefs. Just a little bit out of position, not to mention that having all these targets being attacked is still quite a lot of healing energy. Reefs can only target one ally at a time, so they can't heal everything at once. Because one of the best ways to counter a large amount of Reefs is to try to attack a large amount of targets. The downside, of course, is that spread firing means you can't easily get rid of damage dealers. But if you have something, a couple of weak units damaging RPs or other things nearby the Reefs, and then most of your army hitting the damage dealers, that'll still work. But it looks like, regardless, Ferreter has held off the attack, only losing a couple Octos and an Octopod compared to about a dozen ATHCs. Definitely worth it, however, more ATHCs streaming in from Rockmox. And Ferreter has not managed to deal with this duo. Well, actually, he has. He has actually defended the duo well enough from the looks of it. Let's double check where Rockmox is. Yes, just barely. Getting rid of that Marine, so Ferreter able to live, get his expansion in the northwest corner, at least get a dome in the northwest corner. I'm not sure he's going to build up from there, but he might get something. It's probably just going to be a few RPs and maybe another triad. He's, he's in a better spot now, but Rockmox is fully aware of this northwest expansion, while Ferreter is completely unaware of the southeast expansion. Probably suspicious because of all the ATCs coming in from the south and from this one ramp that doesn't be, get used often, but an Octo there for defense. Being moved away, however, Ferreter at the 1051 mark, not actually harassing the southeast, not double checking that there's anything there. However, in the northwest, building up a reef, and that will be somewhat secure, getting his dome healed up, and then from there he can build RPs fairly easily with a dome for defense. And here we go. Now acting on his suspicions, Ferreter going to the southeast corner of the map and getting rid of everything there. These ATCs will not last, and the factory as well will not last. No macrofabs, no... Well, a mac, but no martanks, no macrofabs. Nothing built up from there, so Brockmox, I think he has built up a macrofab earlier on. Yes, there is. I was wondering where that was. He just hadn't updated yet. So Rockmox has the macrofab, but he doesn't have any martanks. He has nothing built up. That macrofab should be going down fairly quickly. As soon as these octopods get up here, get through the infantry. And once they do that, then this macrofab is going down very shortly. More ATHCs being built up to try to buy time, and the Macrofab itself is buying time, building up, distracting from the damage dealers of the ATHC here, but this ATHC still not enough, goes down, and the Macrofab, primary target, but is it going to be enough? These This Martank is coming up fairly quickly, the Macrofab taking a lot of damage, but the ATHC enough to distract it. The Macrofab will be going down after the Martank comes out, if at all, actually. While well, Ferreter getting... Dealing some harassment from an ATC, but that won't be enough, and this northwest is still safe. He has RPs along the northeast side of the map, and the Octos, the Octopods rather, over the southeast, getting rid of the Martank, well, should be pretty soon, but still gonna be hard for them to get rid of that Macrofab. The ATCs are coming in, still distracting, and Rockmox still has more than enough resources to keep streaming out ATCs and Martanks in order to help deal with this. So it's, while Ferreter does have this expansion in the northwest, he hasn't actually used it to make any RPs, which is going to be a problem. So even though he is dealing some damage to these Martanks and these ATHCs, it's still he's still taking damage, his Octopus is still getting damaged over time, and one of them is going down, actually the ATC is going to take one of them out, while the other one is attempting to get rid of this Macrofab, that won't be enough, another Martank will be up before this Macrofab goes down. And a Sepipod, finally, so Air Units, Ferreter finally taking advantage of the Spire, Having built it a bit too early, but with the three RPs on QP, he should be able to build Sebi pods with great regularity and Faro pods without too much savings. 
And an Octopod coming into the Northwest to help defending us that. Probably going to start building RPs as soon as that's up and he has this securely defended. But ATC is still streaming in from the Southwest Factory. Well, a Northeast Factory... Or Northwest... Sorry. Southeast Factory. Losing the Macrofab and getting more ATC streaming in. That will be... That won't be much of a challenge anymore. The Octopod's having free reign over that area. The Southwest is still where Rockmox has some of his stuff, but most of his stuff was in the Southeast yet. This was his main base, ultimately. Having lost his Macrofab and most of the units he had defending us that, he still has the Southwest base of the factory and the armory here, but simply about getting rid of this importer, no real defenses there. An ATC being built up. No, not being built up. Rockmox has not actually built up an ATC there, and Ferreter having this northwest base very secure and his main base very secure he's in a much safer position to expand out however losing the octopod but still that macrofab going down is an expensive blunder for rockmox not that he has to worry too much about money at the moment but right now neither does ferret or ferret building up a ton of rps just expanding to this base in one go or pushing out the rps i should say he already expanded with the units but building up the economy base there in one go he is really healthy right now. Bit surprised he's not producing as much as he could be, but he's still pretty healthy. Rockmox has no machinery, no advanced tech of any sort. He only has this for production, and he's lost his import as main base. The Semipod got rid of that. This is the unplayable past edge, so other than Chrono Porting, not much can be done. And if I had to say anything, I think Rockmox might be trying to invest in Chrono Porting. That's the only reason I can see for him not spending as much money as he could be. But I don't see why. He's, his armory is going down too quickly for that to be a real concern, and he doesn't have any mechs to build Chrono Porters with. Not that he doesn't have a heart. He's not going to have a hard time doing so. He's going to get on the Macrofab right now, too. But still, that's a lot of resources not being spent well. And the ATC coming in and will be going down without too much trouble. So really, this stream of ATCs is doing very little to deal any damage to Ferreter. I think Ferreter has this. He has the Northwest easily. He has his main base very tightly defended. He has a couple of firebots coming to finish everything off, and once that happens, Rockmox doesn't have much going for him. Another Macrofab coming up. Trying to do what it can. The ATT is trying to help distract, but at this point, distraction is not going to be enough. Rockmox has not been developing himself in the meantime. No tech. Some His production base got heavily damaged, and ATT is doing what damage it can, but even with that, the reefs are going to be too much, healing everything up. The Farpod is not going to be taking any meaningful damage. And Sebibod coming in, defending against this ATHC, taking it out without any problems. While Octopods are also in place to progenerate, is Ferret going for Lego class? He's got an Octopod in progen mode, might just be for healing up, but it is in progen mode. He might be using that for Far Legos or getting Lego class in general, but he does have two Farpods, that is for certain. And as Semipod going for further harassment, getting rid of this factory in the southwest, while Sparpods take care of the southeast. Just deal with that completely. Rockmox needs to get frigates. That His Mar tanks will do nothing. Frigates are his only answer right now, and he has no importers, so really he has no answer, other than build more importers. And even then, that's kind of a tenuous solution if they get found out. And it's still going to be another 40 seconds or so before that, or not even 40, going to be another minute before that even becomes relevant. And by that time, this whole area is going to be just leveled. And this factory as well. The ATCs are coming up trying to help defend. One of them will be able to scare off the Sepipod, but regardless, Ferreter has way too much going for him right now for that to be a real slowdown. And it looks like Ferreter might actually be saving up for chronoporting of his own. Just put really add insult to injury. And Rockmox is... You know, he's not... This... ATHC is going to be able to deal a lot of damage to Sebipod, but not kill it. Sebipod is still alive. Another ATHC coming in. However, well, we jumped back a little bit before that, but another ATHC will be coming in from the looks of it. Or maybe not. No, Rockmox not building that. Not building much of anything, actually. Ferreter is getting Corona boarding. Rockmox has the resources to do so, by the way. And his importer is up. He does have reserves. And he is using those to build a frigate. So he's actually making the right choice, getting an ATHC and a frigate that will be able to deal with the... Well, if they survive, the Farpods will go down, but it looks like the Farpods getting rid of the factory in time. The Frigate not able to attack, but with the ATC support, just getting up in time to distract the Farpods. One of the Farpods goes down, but another one chronoports back. Ferreter uppercutting with these Farpods. That should be game. I don't think there's any way that 
Rock Moss could deal with this. That Chronoport Farpod is going to be able to deal all the damage. And at the same time, the Sepipod is dealing all that damage they can to the main base, getting rid of the RPs there, and these ATHCs completely useless, have been useless for the last five minutes, really. He just had this rally point towards the base here, and hasn't actually been doing much with it since. Similarly with, well, this factory has rally point changed around a bit, but like I said, that Chronoport is going to be huge. Once it manages to go through and we see everything. But, yeah, this red time wave is carrying forward the Chronoport and the damage it dealt. And Rockmox double checking it. Huh. That's odd. Maybe it's the blue time wave then. Yes, it is the blue time wave. Dealing quite a bit of damage, actually. It's that far pod just periodically dealing damage to everything around. And that will easily take care of the southeast base before it's even a problem. So... Ferreter has this game in the bag. I don't see Rockmox getting out of this. Getting Lego class as well. I don't know if he's going to use the Lego class, but he has it. And he is using it, getting off to Legos. So yeah, he's he's in a great position. Rockmox, lots of money in the bank, but nowhere to spend it, nor he is spending it. And here's that far upon I mentioned. Getting rid of... Oh, trying to get rid of the mech, but getting blocked off by the macrofab. It's not going to be doing too much. Hmm. Anyway... However, the Farpod is ultimately able to take care of these RPs quickly enough. And with support, they do manage to get rid of the base in the southeast. So what Rockmox sees is the base that doesn't actually exist anymore. The blue time wave carries along its destruction, and from there, that'll be it. There's really nothing that Ferreter has that can't win with at this point. He's he's got it, moving the Octopod in as well, and that blue time wave carrying the truth, and the truth is Rockmox has no real main base anymore. A Martank dealing what it can to damage the Arcticus, but nowhere near enough. That one Martank will not kill it in time. Not with the healing support. Losing the armory, so no way Rockmox can tech up. His reserves doing what they can, but having no tech, all he can really do is Lancers and ATHCs, which is nothing compared to Leo class coming up, and compared to the Arianists that were coming up from Ferreter before. Especially with Chronoporting, so Rockmox appears to be out of the tournament completely. He did quite well though, but yeah, actually that was two losses in a row. He had the winner's bracket completely until fighting and losing. So this was his only loser's bracket match and looks like Ferder will be able to get through and fight Kronavran. So Ferder, good job. This will be, like I said, tomorrow's matches will be Ferder and Kronavran, excuse me, which May it will be best of three, but if Cronamorant loses the first set, Cronamorant, then because of, because of double elimination, Cronamorant needs to lose twice, there will be two best of threes if that happens. Otherwise, there will simply be one best of three if Ferreter loses. But that's going to be what we'll see in tomorrow's cast. For today, this is pretty much it. Just waiting for Cronamorant, sorry, for Rockmox to surrender, and Cronamorant will have his opponent, a Ferreter. Once Rockmox officially surrenders and this is done, then that will be today. But yeah, Ferreter nicely done. Nice use of this Northwest. Nice use of recent. I mean, that was a tight spot too. The HHC's coming in, streaming in, and managing to fend them off was really clever. That was cool to watch. Of course, being that it is Carnabbit versus Ferreter, it's going to mean weaponry? Okay, this is just. I, I mean, at this point. Ferreter knows he's won, so just going for weaponry at this point is just a joke, but still. Weaponry? Really? At any rate, this is... Anyways, I was saying, so yeah, Crown Aberrant mains Grekum as well, so this is one of those times where all I gotta say is I hope you like Grekum mirrors. And Factory getting destroyed, or damaged, not destroyed completely, but another Plasma Cruise Missile coming in no, that's the same one. I keep making that mistake. The factory, however, is going down. The Plasma Cruise Missile did deal a fair amount of damage to it. Right, right remember. Plasma Cruise Missiles hit before they fire. Gotta remember that. It's very important. So you see a Plasma Cruise Missile fire at you, you're already dead. The Octopod is just double-checking the southeast. They will find, or they might find the importers. I... I think the vision range will see it. Yes, it will. Just barely find the importers. Ferret is going to be able to get rid of Rockmox's last ditch attempt to save himself. And then once that happens, that will be game. But I think Ferret might 
Well, he might be toying with him. Might be sending out another Plasma Cruise Missile over in this direction to take care of everything here. Definitely sending Octoligos to finish it off in no time. But making sure that this Southeast expansion has not been taken yet, because if that has been taken, it's going to be harder for Fair to deal with Rockmox. But nope. No problem at all. These imports are going to go down without any real fight. Just in case, though, Ferreter is going to chronoport them back. While Rockmox, really not much you can do. Ferreter chronoporting back the Octoligo before the imports even get built to deal with them. So the green time wave is going to carry along that Octoligo jumping back, and that will be game. So you see, the Octoligo is taking care of the infantry in no time as well, and this is right before Chronoport's back. <laughs> Rockmox confident, apparently, according to the chat logs. Nope, no, he's not. He surrendered. So Rockmox has surrendered. That is two games. Ferder winning against Rockmox two nothing. Oops. I mean, he's winning against Rockmox two nothing, and. Nicely done. So Ferder will be against Kron Aberrant. That will be very interesting set of best of three or best of threes. At least one, possibly two. So this is it for me for tonight. Thank you everyone for watching and have a good night everybody.